the ex the outgoing deputy lord mayor was appointed as a director in charge of gender community development and production and uh, the process for her appointment into that particular position is ongoing because it has to be done in a phased manner starting with the nomination from the office of the president to public service for vetting and subsequently formal appointment and assumption of office and there has been a lot of uh, controversies about that appointment and how the whole institution is going to work in light of those new developments to public offices. That is the position of the law. The office of the deputy lord mayor is full time and so is the office of the director in charge of any directorate in the institution. It's on record. This office of the deputy lord mayor has been occupied by Honorable Hajat Sala Kanyike since 2016, June. Prior to that, she served in my office as my political assistant in charge of administration. Within the structure of KCCA, the office of the Lord Mayor has got two personal assistants. One in charge of administration and another one political. So she served as a personal assistant for the period I served here in the previous term. And even when the impeachment, the purported impeachment process was carried out, on the 25th day of November 2013 and the Lord Mayor's office locked and he illegally evicted and or rather he was illegally evicted she was also thrown out she returned as a councillor representing much India East after the general elections of 2016 and in accordance with the law I appointed as my, her as my deputy the position she has held until now or until a few uh, minutes ago on Friday night we got the news in the media that she had been appointed as a director in charge of public, I mean, uh, charge of gender, community development, and production. I requested her to take a decision to choose between the two offices, and I gave a grace period of three days. Today morning, as we are preparing for this press conference, she came to the office of the Lord Mayor. And we have just been with her in a brief meeting within the office of the Lord Mayor And at exactly 11 a.m., she tendered in a written resignation, a copy of which I have here. And 
this is what she has said. Designation for my position as the deputy lord mayor. The above caption matter refers where in a respectively address you as Ianda. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for allowing me to work with you as deputy lord mayor of Kampala Capital City Authority. Your worship, I appreciate the cordial working relationship I shared with you and the opportunities for growth and development you have provided to me during my tenure as the deputy lord mayor. It has been my pleasure to work with you and the team at large. I also wish to take this opportunity to thank you for your guidance and immense contribution to my career and personal life. I have enjoyed working under your leadership. Your Worship, I would like to humbly request you to accept this letter as my formal resignation from my position as the Deputy Lord Mayor, effective 30th June 2020, to pave way for my retirement from active politics. I wish you and the entire team the very best going forward. You are sincerely Ajat Sara Kanyike, Deputy Lord Mayor. Like and honor invoking the powers vested in the office of the Lord Mayor under Section 9 and 10 of KCC Act to declare that Honorable Dorin Nyanjula has been appointed a Deputy Lord Mayor. We have had to do a lot of consultations and there was a consensus amongst various stakeholders, including my colleagues here, members of cabinet. There was a consensus from different stakeholders with whom we share the shades of opinion in the realm of politics and the struggle for the liberation of the country. There were many who were qualified, but from amongst the many, there is always that one person who should be the flag bearer for that particular cause. She stands discharged from the office of the Lord Mayor. This request of going up to 30th. We have had a heated debate there. We shall handle it administratively. But effective today, it means the office becomes vacant. It has fallen vacant with this re resignation. And of course, since the process of appointing a new one is also not a one-day event because it takes different stages. It starts with the nomination or the appointment, rather, of the person who is going to take on the mantle. And then the next stage would be presenting that particular appointee to council for consideration and adoption, we have commenced the process today. This is what I'm saying in a nutshell. We are commencing the process of replacing her today and now. Postgraduate uh, degree in public policy and governance. She has a bachelor's degree of Bachelor's of Arts in Tourism, a Diploma in Sustainable Urban Water and Sanitation, and a lot or a plethora of certificates in different disciplines, but particularly in leadership. She has a track record as a leader of one impeccable record, having served in the following positions. One, she's currently the authority councillor representing Makerere University. 
She is a member of Makerere University Council 2016 to date. Chairperson Revenue Standing Committee where she served between 2016 and 2017. Guild Vice President at Makerere University 2011-2012. A member of the Makerere University Council 2011-2012. National Coordinator of the Unemployed 2014-2015, Secretary for Trade and Investment in the Forum for Democratic Change Party 2015 to date, Chairperson School Council 2007-2008, several other leadership roles. She has a very rich CV which speaks to a person who is competent to serve in that particular capacity and to execute the duties of the office of the Lord Mayor uh, as enshrined in the law. She has made a number of publications. I'll just highlight a few. One, she has authored a book together with one Bagaya Ibrahim titled, the, Is It the Fundamental Change? It's a handbook on the politics of this country. Impact of political conflicts on tourism, or tourism flow in Uganda, 1900-2012. Again, authored by Honorable Bonyanjula. Corporate governance practice and performance of public sector institutions, a case study of KCC, and so on and so forth. As the appointing authority, I have no reservation to vouch for her competence, for her credibility, and for her steadfastness when it comes to fighting for social justice, rule of law, equit equitable development, and all the values that we hold dear as a people. She is not a novice when it comes to matters of governance in this country. I am quite confident that she will put her skills, enormous skills for that matter, and experience to the service of the people of Kampala and for the betterment of their lives and also for the improvement of the lives of our people across the board for Kampala and the whole of Uganda. And immediately assume office. There will be a function for our installation going through the ceremony of uh, the robbing ceremony because she has to get the robes. We can't do the robbing now. It will be done on Monday when she's officially being on inaugurated and he, installed in the office of the Deputy Lord Mayor. Necessity <laughs> created a vacancy within the cabinet. Because you are aware she is holding the portfolio of the Minister for Finance and Administration. That position, that position will now be assigned to somebody else, as we shall be communicating to you. But as you know, the deputy Lord Mayor, who is now in the process of handing over the office, the, the outgoing rather, the outgoing Deputy Lord Mayor has also been holding the docket of the Minister for Gender, Community Service, and Production. In the instrument of appointment that we presented to Council a couple of weeks ago, you remember we gave that assignment to the outgoing Deputy Lord Mayor. Actually, there are two ministries. There is the ministry 
of gender community and community services as well as production and marketing. So for that matter, Honorable Dorini Nyanjura is again appointed as a minister for gender and community services as well as production and marketing. So she's taking on that role as well, which was previously being held by the outgoing Deputy Lord Mayor Hajat Sala Kanyike, who takes on the new appointment as a director within the same directorate. If, in effect, f and for the record and for uh, purposes of clarity, people to understand what it really means, there is a minister and a director within the structure. So now the Minister for Gender, Community Services, Production and Marketing is Honorable Doreen Nyanjula. This in effect means she is the immediate supervisor of the director holding that particular portfolio <laughs> who is Hajat Sala Kanyike. They have to work out a mechanism. We are, as the executive, working out a mechanism. We had a cabinet meeting, which was fully attended by even the directors and the executive director. We are trying to work out a, mechan a reporting mechanism on how the directors will be reporting to the ministers. So it will be from within that instrument that the mechanism will come out on how the director for gender, the new director for gender, community service and production will be reporting to the minister. That will be worked out. We again congratulate. Honorable Nyanjula relinquished her position as the minister for finance, human and human administration and human the minister for finance, administration and yeah, I think it's finance and administration. This docket, we shall explain to you what it involves. And after wide consultations, and again after generating consensus amongst the different stakeholders, this position has been assigned to Honorable Bokatab Moses. <laughs> I'll pause for a second <laughs> to invite to request Honorable Bokatabu to come and take his position before I present to you his CV and the rest of what I have to take. CV. And I take this opportunity to present his CV to you. He's currently serving as the authority councillor, representing, no, I'm sorry, I've started midway. He was born on 29th November 1975 at a place called Ichanya, that's where I was born, in Kayunga district. He's a married man and he's a Ugandan by nationality. He's a councillor, currently is a member is a councillor representing Kampala Central Division B, a member of Revenue Standing Committee, that's where he has been serving, a member of Engineering and Technical Services Committee, and other responsibilities he has held ever since he assumed the position of the councillor in the authority. He was uh, designated as the focal person to Lake Victoria Region and Local Authority Corporation, that is Alaska. It's a platform that, rather, LAVRAC, it's a, pla a platform that brings together all local authorities around Lake Victoria. We, uh, on the banks, all local authorities on the banks of Lake Victoria. And you know, KCC also shares banks with Lake Victoria and all within the region. 
It's not only Uganda. He's been a director and he's still a director of KCCAFC, KCCA Football Club, where he has been serving for some good time. And you know I'm the patron of the club. He's a board of governor, Kololo Senior Secondary School. From June 2001 to June 2011, he served as a local government councillor, Kampala City Council, and that is in the defunct KCC, where he held the following positions. Vice Chairman, Works, Traffic and Physical Planning Committee, that is 2007 to 2011, Member Finance and Administration Committee, June 2003, 2007, member of the City Health Policy Committee, 2001 to, to June 2003. From 2005 to 2008, he served as Chief of Operations Officer, Russell Enterprises Limited, working under the CEO, and he was charged with a number of duties as explained in this particular document. He also served as an accounts clerk, account, yes, accounts clerk, Multi Engineering Services Limited, 2001 to 2004. He served as a saturation manager, the Microscope newspaper, 1997 to 1998. And he has also served in various positions within the Democratic Party and currently being the chairman Democratic Party Kampala Central Division. Academic background. He holds a bachelor's degree, Bachelor of Business Administration BBA, that is Makerere University, diploma in business administration, Accounting Pathway Makerere University 2002-2004 Certificate in Business Administration Makerere University Business School Certificate in Management and Leadership Skills for Local Government Peer Consultant Development and Management consult, Consultants 2004 Other qualifications He holds USCE Uganda Advanced Certificate of Education, that is 1994-1996, UCE, 89 to 93, and of course, short leadership courses and workshop certificates and seminars attended on different occasions. That is Honale Bokatabu, who is assuming now the bigger office of the Minister in Charge of Finance and Administration. And as I've told you, he's a leader of an impeccable record, an accomplished, all-round leader in different disciplines. And he has mentored so many people in the field of leadership and the governance. Right, I said, like, like I said, in the, uh, just like in the case of the Deputy Lord Mayor Designate, uh, the Minister for Finance and Administration designate will also be presented to Council on Monday for the subsequent, I mean for the next phase of the appointment process. And uh, the instrument of appointment will be given to you. We still have Honorable Kennedy Okero who is Minister for Works, whose docket covers two directorates, engineering and technical services, as well as physical planning. is here right on my left hand here. And then Honorable Olive Namazi, who also retains her Ministry for Health, Public Health, Education, Sports and Environments, and the docket which handles 
two directorates, education and social services, sports and public health, as well as environment. Expectations, not myself alone, the appointing authority, but the people of Kampala, with the office Honorable Katavu is assuming today. I want to reiterate that as an appointing authority, I am quite confident he will live up to those expectations. With God's grace, we wish you all the best, Honorable Katabu, in your new assignment. Likewise, as I said, we shall give him a few minutes, about two, three minutes, to say a word before we call it a day. Pass on to the provisions of Section 14C of the KCC Act as amended, which makes the office of the Deputy Lord Mayor as a statutory member of the Business Committee of the Council, chaired by the Speaker. I again hereby designate Her Worship Honorable Dorini Nyanjula as the leader of the executive or government business in the council and she will be deputized by Honorable Katab Moses accordingly. This instrument of appointment which I've executed today, the 18th of, 20, of, of June 2020, will be presented to council for that particular purpose. Make the following observations before I invite the team to say a word or two. One, there are two observations I would like to make here. Number one, uh, to the, we have had meetings and have fully briefed the team on the terms of reference. And I have no doubt they fully appreciated the same. That is already done. Second, I'd like to send a message to General Yori Kabutam 7. I think you've done enough to destabilize the office of the Lord Mayor. I invite and call upon General Yori 7 to leave the office of the Lord Mayor intact and let it execute its work in accordance with the law. Should it stop destabilizing? For the previous, for the two terms I've been here, destabilizing the office of the deputy, uh, the Lord Mayor. I think that undue inter interference should cease in the interest of serving the people of Kampala and the Ugandans at large. Second, thirdly, again the same message to. General Yuri Kaputam 7 to let this team deliver quality services to the people of Kampala. We note with dismay that every other day the political space here at KCCA is shrinking the political space, the space for the leadership, the elected leadership, is ever shrinking. Even with the amendment of the laws ostensibly to streamline the functioning of the institution, there is a lot of undue interference with the functioning of the institution. They have been amending the law, recently they amended the law, Still, the political maneuvers are not about to end. This is a formidable team, as you can see, of competent people. These are all graduates. These are all young, energetic men and women who are ready to serve the people of Kampala. The city is in a dire state. It's dysfunctional. There are no functional systems in Kampala. As you can see, you can all witness. In all sectors, 
be it mass public transport, be it public health, be it in planning, physical planning, whatever sector you can talk about, the city is, is in an appalling state. It's dysfunctional. And that's why we are putting forward a very com I mean, laudable program for the transformation of Kampala. And we are committed to delivering the city we deserve, a functional city, a city that will work for all of us. That is all we crave for. Respect for the legal framework put in place to allow the, the informal settlements, slums, uh, poor waste disposal systems and, and, the system and, and mechanisms. So all that you can talk about. We are saying enough is enough. We want to deliver quality services. And for us, our mission is starting with planning. And that's the reason we are emphasizing the issue of planning, transformation of the city to a better and working city that the people of Kampala deserve. I've always presented to you a huge report, which again, I want to show the public. You keep on shining a torch on that report, which was presented by consultants that requires the transformation of Kampala, starting with planning. I've always presented it to you. 500 pages. So we need to have a formidable system, I mean team, a robust system in place, and a functional institution of KCCA to be able to deliver the capital city you want. So we are in a period where the politics is gaining momentum. We are in a period where Mr. Yori Kagutam Seven is on, already on a chessboard to see how he entrenches his dictate, I mean, his uh, mantle. And he would want to use every government institution to advance his political agenda. We are telling him, General Yori Kagutam Seven, please let KCCA as an agency deliver on its mission, on its vision. Please spare us your politics of entrenching the system in place. So we do not expect General Kaguta Yori Kagutam 7 to use KCCA as an institution to advance his political agenda. Especially at this critical moment when they are preparing for a scientific election. Because we have all the worries that with a scientific election, they are going to very much use institutions like a KCCA to advance that particular agenda or program. Just like they have been using RDCs and whatnot in the COVID task force. So we don't expect KCCA to be used as a political conduit to advance General Kagutam Seveni's political agenda in the wake of this new political, I mean, dispensation where we expect campaigns to be done in a rather peculiar manner. So that is our call. With those remarks. Nation by the Lord Mayor to serve the people of Kampala as his deputy. If passed by council, I'll be a deputy to a leader who has untiringly fought for the people of Kampala a seasoned defender of the voiceless, a steady general for the struggle for truth and justice, and rule of law. Taking this responsibility, Your Worship, demands of me to further summon the courage in me, the loyalty in me, and the spirit to stand for and besides the people of this city. Your Worship, I'm pleased and I indeed feel honored and privileged at your invitation for me to be in the service of what matters to the people of Kampala. As I have known you and as I have learned from you, I know that your agenda for the city continues to be social justice for our people, to ensure betterment of our infrastructure for Kampala, the betterment of public schools for our young learners, the betterment of public, the betterment of public health centers for the, our residents, 
the betterment of markets, business places and other public places for the people of Kampala. However, as you might know, this desire to better these and other services cannot be properly achieved under the current governance conditions imposed on us by the sitting regime that continues to impose itself and repress our citizens. I take this office in very challenging times. I have been nominated at a time when the space for real leaders of the people continues to shrink. Museven and his regime are continuing the illegitimate struggle to edge out KCCA leadership and impose barricades that make it nearly impossible for us to serve our people. Those who oppress us intend to extend their oppression through what they are referring to us as a scientific election. I have never tolerated any kind of fraud, worse still, political fraud. I do accept, Your Worship, this uh, nomination on the premise that this is not a position of comfort. This is a position of struggle. And in this position, I intend to deepen the struggle against the seven Junta. FDC is FDC is one Uganda, one people, one Uganda. I intend to do that, Your Worship so that our women and children in this country can live in a free and liberated country where each of them can use the opportunities available to them to improve their living conditions. I therefore understand our continued joint effort to liberate ourselves from this corrupt and suppressive regime. I'll continue to work with you to execute the struggle until when our people are fully liberated. I also take this honor and privilege to congratulate my friend, my colleague, Honorable Councillor Katabu Moses. I wouldn't be here if it was not for the kindness and mandate of the people of Makere University. I extend my sincere gratitude to them and promise my continued loyalty to the struggles for which they sent me to lead. Your Worship, I once again thank you for trusting me. I once again thank you for trusting me that I'll deliver to expectations. I pledge I'll do my best and I'll serve to the best of uh, my capabilities. Thank you very much. <laughs> which comprises of nine parishes in, this, in the middle of the city. Mr. Lord Mayor, first of all, I would like to thank you very much for appointing me or for giving me this opportunity to serve the people of Kampala as the Minister of Finance and other responsibilities. Thank you very much, Mr. Lord Mayor. First of all, we are here as leaders, and some of us, we came here for one purpose, is to deliver services to our people. I myself, I stay in Chiseni, that slum area, for several years. I know what people need. I know some people are not even getting lunch, lunch, they have a lot of problems. That's our city. Therefore, Mr. Lord Mayor and the people of Kampala, we know that you need services, and I myself, Mr. Lord Mayor, I'm ready. I know, as you said, that people are expecting much from us. Really, they are true. They're expecting much. And we pledge that we are going to deliver to their expectation. Ladies and gentlemen, dear members of press, uh, Mr. Lord Mayor, we need, as leaders, we need to respect each other. That's my request. 
if you are to deliver services to our people, if you are to be a good leader, we need to respect each other. Because if you don't respect your friend or your leader, your fair leader, it means in return you get the same courage. They don't respect you. Therefore, it is very important, Mr. S Mr. Lord Mayor, as leaders, respect each other. Number two, Mr. Lord Mayor, is, and you go to the clinic, KCC clinic, you can really understand what is there. The personnel, they are few. We don't have doctors. We don't have everything. So the clinic is down. It's upon we as leaders to bring that, that, uh, that clinic up so that our people are happy. If you go to the street of Kampala, Mr. Lord Mayor, it's very clear. There's no light. We need to put lights on the streets and other problems. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Lord Mayor, sir, I think it's very important to respect each other so that we can deliver services to our people. Lastly is accountability. As Minister of Finance, I think accountability is going to be on my table. Number one issue is going to be accountability. We need to account for everything in this institution. If we do that, Mr. Lord Mayor, I think I'm very confident that we are going to deliver services to our people, and our people, they are going to be very happy. Thank you very much, dear members of press. And I want to take you back again to our core values. Actually, our philosophy as a team you see here, we believe in a shared vision. And I request you, because I want to underscore that particular point so that you highlight it, you get to appreciate what we stand for. That philosophy which we hold dear to ourselves, we espouse it as leaders. We must transform this country, rather the city, together. That's why we emphasize the point of collectiveness, the point of a shared vision, so that we go to a common destination, so that we, because we have those shared ideals and one of those fundamentals that we put emphasis on shared vision we don't believe in personal empires we don't believe in a one man is show we believe in collective efforts collective ideas and collective transformation and that's why we want to move together as a team and deliver the city that you want